We're here at VMworld 2018 in Las Vegas, and we're visiting the Hitachi booth. Um, can you tell us a little bit about Hitachi and what you're showing here at VMworld? Sure. Hitachi Ventara exists to help with our customers' digital transformation journey. The reality is our customers are competing with these digital disruptors, and they need to relook at their customer experience, relook at their operational logistics, and create new business models to compete with those disruptors that are taking away those new customer segments. They do that by moving from an IT-centric, an application-centric environment to a data-centric. They want to look to create data insights and data value. In order to do that, they, they create a stairway to value, which we would generally refer to as seed. They look at abstracting data away from its source, store it in a different place. They're looking to enrich that data by adding um, information about that data, information about the files and pictures and video. Then they want to activate that data. They want to combine it with external information. They want to be able to combine their machine data and uh, business structure data and their human related data. Then they want to monetize it. How am I going to earn new revenue with that data? How am I going to be more efficient? How am I going to make better decisions? And that's where Hitachi Ventara sits in place. And um, so how do you fit into the uh, VMware ecosystem? VMware is a very close partner with us. The reality is virtualization is the key to abstracting that data. We kind of think of it as a, as a data strategy for, for digital transformation. And, and, VMworld and uh, VMware and Hitachi come together to, to create data management capability, to create data security or governance capability, to create data mobility capability, abstract data away from its source, make it available to people, places, and things, and finally data analytics. And it's the virtualization and desktop and human layer that comes together to, to make that possible, to create agile IT possible. Great. And so this is kind of a, uh, we've been asking some of our thought leaders where do we think the industry is going over the course of the next year? Maybe you'd like to answer that? The next year is really about diversification. There's always this cloud first or mobile first and edge first type of concept, which is incredibly real. The reality is I might have 20,000, 30,000 applications. It's really about diversification. How do I make sure that I create applications that might be deployed in my traditional data center, in my private cloud, in my third party offerings, in my public cloud? How do I consume public cloud services? And how do I make sure all of that works as one continuous environment? Especially when I add the edge, when I need to do analytics at the actual machine all the way to analytics in the cloud. The reality is one application doesn't solve a business problem. 23 applications solves a business problem. And they need to all be integrated together and managed as a single unit. It's that diversification that is the complexity that's going to happen over the next 18 months. Great. And is there something that we could take a look at, maybe a demo? Absolutely. We're, we're going to show you over the next little bit on how we modernize IT to create that agile IT infrastructure. So what are you going to show us? Yeah, so as Paul previously mentioned, no, we, we are focused on helping customers have a agile data center. Um, so obviously we're focused on uh, agile data infrastructure, modern data protection, and intelligent operations. So I thought I'd just show you some software examples of how we're enabling customers have the agile data operation experience. Sounds great. Uh, and so normally when we give our demonstrations to our attendees here, we kind of tee it up with this kind of slide here to say, you know, when customers are deploying the VMware environment, they obviously focus on the VMware stack of management tool sets. You know, uh, uh, when they want to integrate the patch infrastructure, whether it's uh, all flash storage or hyper converged storage, they, they really want to achieve these outcomes across single pane of management, uh, storage aware services and offload capabilities and integrated data protection. So what we're doing really is helping customers maintain their single VMware stack for manageability, uh, plus use the rich integrations we build, we plug into this stack to help customers really have a, a really truly automated data center uh, experience. So with that, let me just show you some examples of what we're doing. Actually, I'll, I'll show you one more thing. So, so when, when it comes to kind of infrastructure, obviously there's deploying infrastructure and deploying application services. So when it comes to infrastructure, you know, we, we enable customers to have a really agile infrastructure deployment model. So whether you're deploying ESA hosts or deploying data stores or bare metal hosts, or doing indeed firm upgrades of network or compute nodes, we've got a very rich management plane uh, to achieve that for customers, all from a VMware experience. So let me show you some examples of what that looks like. So from a, from a vSphere, a client perspective, we have an integrated uh, 
client plugin into vCenter. Uh, this is called UCP Advisor. So UCP Advisor is a tool set that helps customers manage uh, converge, hyperconverge, or storage systems in a VMware-based setting. And uh, it's being extended further going forward. So in this environment, for example, we have a system which is managing Ethernet and fiber channel switches. We're managing a uh, compute cluster of seven nodes. And we also have storage uh, uh, converted in this environment as well. I'm going to give you some examples of some of the simplicity that we're adding. So when customers, for example, want to deploy, when they want to provision data stores, it's just a simple wizard-based approach to deploy data stores in an environment. They simply click the data stores they want, whether they want a single or multi data stores. Now we select the storage system. And then, once we select, obviously, many of our customers have multiple storage systems in the environment, and then we select a class, right? So, again, we'll put a, a silver class storage tool. And now we get a chance where a customer can select that they want to have their storage uh, allocated to a host or to a particular cluster. So again, most customers want to allocate their storage to an ESSI cluster. Click next and finished. So again, within 30 seconds now, that customer has achieved an ability to have access to that data store, which is available to consume VMs in that environment. So again, very simple interface, uh, not just through a vSphere client plugin experience, but also through a REST API experience. So depending on customers' uh, needs, uh, they can achieve very quick infrastructure operations in the environment. So it doesn't just stop at uh, uh, infrastructure operations, uh, let's see. So as that, uh, as that storage is deployed, you know, uh, an important characteristic for customers is obviously they have to maintain uh, SLAs for customers. So I'll show you, can give you an example of what that looks like. So most customers, when they have infrastructure deployed, obviously we just walked through USP Advisor, they're, they're focused on application services. They need to deploy application services on this uh, agile data infrastructure. And when it comes to application services, you know, those business users are focused on uh, SLAs for the application, whether it's performance, security, uh, data protection attributes. And so what we're helping customers do is help those business users uh, request the services they want for the application services and consume the right infrastructure as part of that deployment. So let me show you some examples of how we're doing that uh, with, with Atachi Vantara. And so what we're doing, uh, as I mentioned, we're going, to, we're going to basically tie up infrastructure capabilities such as performance replication that we've identified and basically show customers how to use policies and have everything controlled via policies in your environment. So let's go back here. So I'll just go back to the uh, vSphere client and I'll show you uh, the first one. The first one really is around data protection. So as you previously saw, we just provisioned a data store in the environment. And for most customers, really, is to how do I enable data protection and uh, replication capabilities on a data store through a simple mechanism. So we've integrated tag-based capabilities into our architecture. Uh, I'll show you. So we simply assign a tag to a data store. So in this case, I'm going to assign a different. I'm going to assign a data protection policy of VADP snap. And essentially, what this says is. When this tag is applied to this particular data store, the system is automatically going to apply VADP policies on this data store. It's going to initiate storage-based snapshots on a, on a frequent schedule and also enable this data store in an active-active configuration. And how we achieve that really is integration between vCenter and our data protection and automation software called HDID, so which I'll show you here. So HDID is a really uh, neat tool for customers to set up really rich data protection policies and automate their DR configurations. So as an example, that policy I just showed you is this one here. So basically any, any object in vCenter that's tagged with that particular policy will now uh, will achieve this policy of a VADP backup on the particular data store, and that data store, as I mentioned, will have an active-active configuration with a remote location, all via simple policy-based mechanism. Again, so we're trying to really simplify the experience for customers using policy-based management to set up complex infrastructure operations in the environment. So that's data protection. So it did a pretty good job on, on the infrastructure there. The other aspect, too, is around other characteristics of data stores. It's not just all about performance. There's aspects around uh, security, encryption, uh, data location are very important attributes for a lot of customers too. So with our system, we've automatically determined a lot of capabilities that can be assigned on a data store. And so vCenter picks this up for both VMFS and vVol 
it picks up these attributes of the data stores, which you'll see become very important for provisioning operations as well. And we, this is all achieved through our, our VASA interface. So we've got a very rich VASA experience for customers where they basically have one large pool of resources in their environment, and then they can basically defi define capabilities on that system very quickly and efficiently in their environment. So again, uh, so we have this one large pool uh, of a couple of terabytes, and again, we give customers a, a flexibility where the system will also determine capabilities of the storage resource, but they can go ahead and, and define additional capabilities that may be important to a customer. So again, all these managed capabilities are all determined, and we give customers flexibility to define the class of resource that they have defined uh, in their storage infrastructure. And all this gets fed up into vCenter for VM admins to uh, use and, uh, for VM provisioning operations. We've also extended it too, so we see a lot of customers where they have attributes which, which are important to them. As I mentioned, data center location, for Europe, a lot of GDPR requirements, so they can tag certain resources that being GDPR compliant. So again, the characteristics of data stores are really enhanced uh, with Apache Bantara. So let me go back to uh, the web client here. And again, most, most of these infrastructure tasks are really achieved through policies. So vCenter has uh, really good policies called VM, uh, VM storage policies. And so basically we've enhanced VM storage policies to take advantage of these characteristics. So for example, here we have a set of storage policies. I have a storage policy here, say called encrypted. And it's, in essence, what this storage policy says, any resource that's applied this policy should end up with an encrypted data at rest storage. So, so uh, we've got a rule set here that says, if this rule, if this end-to-end -end encryption or encryption at rest is, is found, then this policy will apply to a VM. So again, this is really good, but again, what we find is for most application deployments, the vSphere admin doesn't understand maybe all the characteristics of an application. So what was important for us really is to expose this up into a cloud portal where end consumers can provision application services. So let me show you an example of what that looks like. So here is our Hitachi Enterprise Cloud. So again, Hitachi Enterprise Cloud is uh, our consumption-based private cloud service. We deploy this uh, uh, into customers environments and they basically pay a consumption model to deploy this. And obviously we can help customers with existing infrastructure get this level of automated cloud services for both infrastructure and VM services. But to kind of show you an example that I just spoke about, here is the, uh, we just built some demos of custom forms. So custom forms is new in, in uh, VRLize automation. And here we're going to request a service. So again, if I'm a, if I'm a healthcare application owner, I want to request a service. This is probably the experience you'll experience with Apache Bantara. So again, besides the normal things of requesting a uh, size of vCPU, we've kind of integrated uh, the uh, infrastructure capabilities. So let me show you how that looks like. So again, I'm selecting my four CPU side. But now I get a chance as an app owner to specify what cloud resources do I need for my application service. So again, in this case, I may be a healthcare application, and so I want to have it ensure that I have encrypted at rest as part of my cloud resources as part of deployment. And also, this is a critical healthcare application. I can specify what gold class policy for it. So again, a gold class policy in this case may equate to you know, retain backups uh, for five days, but do the backups every eight hours and so forth. And again, uh, for a customer, they want very quick restore options. They have an option of very quick restore options depending on their characteristics. So again, I'll just simply uh, healthcare app and submit that. So again, so here's, here's the app experience for application owners as they, as they request services. They now get the VMs that meet their application SLAs and they meet all the other requirements such as uh, security and data protection all built into a simple service operation. And the end result really is when they go back to vSphere, from a vSphere admin perspective, when they look at their VMs in their environment, you know, they will see that the VMs as they get deployed in the environment, they'll, our, our system automatically ensures that resource ends up on an encrypted uh, data at rest storage location, and we've automatically tagged it with data protection policies, all out from a simple uh, experience from uh, CloudPort. So again, that's kind of some examples of how we're helping customers have an automated data, data infrastructure, uh, sorry, agile data infrastructure, and I uh, would really recommend you to come by the Atachi Bantara booth to, to see further uh, abilities. Thanks so much.